It's the Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by ANZ Home Loans for financial well-beings. And welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Breakfast, available of course every morning on iHeartRadio, Spotify and Apple and wherever you get your podcasts from. It is a Monday morning, August the 28th today. Hope you had a fantastic, relaxing, unwinding weekend and for the month of August, mortgage holders caught a lucky reprieve from any rate rise and the word pause was introduced for a second time in a row. Is next month going to be as lucky? That is the question. Tomorrow week we will be on the eve of finding out the answer to that question. As we know, mortgage costs have forced uh, many homeowners into taking extra jobs That's on top of potentially an extra job. They're renting out their homes on Airbnb or seeking additional sources of income. And economists and industry professionals are still suggesting caution and evaluating the effects of all the other previous rate rises before implementing further increases. And the catchphrase there is all the others. We have talked about how fast the year has gone, but if you are that mortgage holder clinging on to your house and not knowing what fate is going to be handed down by the RBA next week, I want you to think about these mortgage holders' stress levels if it doesn't affect you, because it has been going on all year. Can you imagine the fatigue and the anxiety? It's easy to forget if you are okay, if you you're comfortable and it doesn't affect you, but it is a hell of a long time to worry about maintaining your roof over your head if it does affect you. Well, this morning we are talking to Matt Michaela from Ray White TMG Emerald Lakes on the Gold Coast. I mean, last week we were talking about the Gold Coast, weren't we? Just about every day. Not sure what is going on, but we are headed back there on our Monday. Monday morning and good morning Matt welcome to the real estate breakfast thank you very much I appreciate you having me on the show well despite everything of what I've said distressed property listings due to mortgage payment difficulties they say they are telling us are decreasing despite economic pressures like those rising interest rates and that dirty word of inflation. I understand that you, right at the moment, you have some investors that are cashing in now because their repayments on their properties have gone up so much. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, mate, um, we were fortunate enough to have done nine sales in the last month and three of them have been investors cashing out. The reason for that is, yeah, naturally they're on an interest rate of 2%. It's about to triple on average. So they're just taking their money and potentially waiting to buy at a better time. Is it that old story where you you reach that tipping point with a deck load of cards and they start to fall over? In other words, have you got some of these investors that are not just selling one but multiple? Yeah, 100%. I actually have an investor who I met with who has asked me to sell three of his investments. So I definitely think, yeah, now's the time that people are starting to cash out, especially with the predicted surplus of properties going to come on the market between the next two to six months. So just take us inside that conversation. You're talking to an investor. He's got multiple properties. He sits down with you. How stressed are these people? Investors that have multiple properties, they aren't the most stressful conversations that we're having on a daily basis. The most stressful clients that we're dealing with are people that have upsized and that have potentially overcommitted themselves. So maybe from a townhouse up to a freehold property, but now won't be able to afford those home loans. So we're having uh, regular conversations with people actually potentially thinking about downsizing Yeah, but uh, coming back to the investor who's got a number of properties, they're obviously feeling the pinch because they're having to sell up, as you said, more than just one of these properties. So that conversation that you're having, you're saying that they're not stressed? 
Oh, look, there's a little bit of pressure on them. Respectfully, we don't know how much stress they're under. They will never show their full deck of cards to us because if they do, then that's naturally showing vulnerability and they're worried about agents actually underselling the property. But we can sense that there's urgency from these types of people and these types of investors to clear the property in a timely manner. And just tell us a little bit about uh, your particular area there. What's been happening around the the whole inquiry rate over the last uh, three months? Um, Inquiry has actually been really, really strong, but it's also dependent on price point. So the higher the price point, the less the inquiry is happening at the moment. Our entry level stuff, so our units, our townhouses, mortgage in possessions, naturally, the inquiry is super, super strong. Uh, but I think there's a lot of growth in our area over the next eight years. We've got the Olympic Games coming to a capital city in Brisbane, which is only an hour away from us. So I actually think the smart move would be to hold long term if, if possible. Each week, we bring you in-depth real estate discussions, including inspiring stories from homeowners, knowledgeable real estate professionals and economists. Whether you're a buyer, seller or just a real estate enthusiast, we are your ultimate property podcast. A lot of friends back in Sydney and they're selling houses for sort of upwards of two, two and a half million dollars. Up here, that money would get you a far superior home and also put you in a position that's sort of either on water and potentially even have a little boat out the front. That's got to be a great marketing ploy, having the same name. (laughs) It really is. We get called the Joes, Joe and Joe. Yeah, it's definitely caught on. It's a little bit different. Joe and I actually got together through our boys play for the local football side, the Tugan Seahawks. I think the the spring selling season as such uh, most likely started in Melbourne and Sydney when the birds are singing and the flowers are out. Certainly um, when spring comes around, uh, we do see more properties come on the market. Yes, look, definitely where a larger house might have space where, look, I didn't think of this, I could add this later. You need to have a pretty good grasp of what your brief is and, and what the, I guess, overall desired outcome is. Let's fuel your passion for property together. Join us along with our industry experts to help inspire and inform your next real estate decision. Well, there's been plenty of talk, of course, in the last week about sellers returning to the property market following months of hesitation driven by expectations that interest rates have reached or are very close to their peak. And a realestate.com.au survey highlighted market uncertainty as the primary reason for sellers holding back along with difficulties in finding a replacement property. And PropTrack data revealed a notable increase in new property listings in Sydney and Melbourne in July, deviating from the typical seasonal trend, leading to a reasonably high total number of properties listed for sale in both Sydney and Melbourne. However, Poor old Perth, the total number of properties for sale has hit a record low, indicating tighter supplies. And the REA Group's Property Seeker Survey found that while 1 million Australians intend to sell a home, only one in four plan to proceed with selling. So that is the lay of the land. If you're turning a year older today for August the 28th, happy birthday. Birthday, Jack Black is celebrating with you, turning 53. If you like a little bit of country and pop intertwined, Shania Twain, she's turning 57. Jason Priestley is turning 53. Leanne Rhymes is turning 40. And David Fincher, the director, is turning 60 today. It's the main centre forecast. And around the country, let's check on our Monday morning weather lineup. First, we go to Sydney. Good morning to you. Expecting, well, it should be mainly fine, partly cloudy and a high of 21 degrees. Melbourne also should be a mainly fine day, a bit of cloud hanging around. 19 is your forecast top. In Brisbane, something like a 50 to 60% chance of maybe a shower. Otherwise, 
tomorrow's dry and fine, 24. And in Perth today for your Monday, a mainly fine day and 23. Ready to take your real estate knowledge to the next level? So are we. As I mentioned at the top, of course, we do have this RBA decision, which is uh, just over a week away. How are you feeling in terms of these interactions with home owners, uh, with mortgages, as you say, some with quite large amounts? How are you feeling in terms of what sort of an impact a, another rate rise will have on these people in particular? My sister's in this position too. So she's actually just bought a property, a townhouse two years ago. Prior to that, she was renting and we're having, you know, daily conversations with her about what the plan is, what should she do moving forward. So our heart definitely goes out to them and we're not only affected through clients, but also, you know, through staff members here, whilst also close family members are also feeling the pinch. Must be hard in terms of being in the game of real estate and your poor old sister there, you know, she she made the commitment, no doubt got a lot of great advice from you at the time and then the market changes and then you're trying to sort of, I guess, keep her in a calm position and try and work your way out of it. Yeah, mate, 100%. Like, um, I try to use my knowledge and expertise to actually get her into the market. And I'm continue trying to do that now to keep her, you know, holding her asset if we can. The plus side is she's probably made 200 grand on top of the sale price there. So we as a family have some tough decisions to make on, you know, whether she does cash in with the 200,000 and what that means to her, how long will she be waiting to get back into the property market, or if we can help her, you know, sustain the asset there. And we talked at the top about distressed property listings due to mortgage uh, payment difficulties are decreasing. I guess in your position there, and particularly personally what's happening with your sister, probably hard to sort of go along and think, yeah, is it really decreasing? Well, the perception in the marketplace is it's not decreasing, but if stats and figures are displaying that, then we can't argue argue with stats and figures and facts are always facts. I guess opinions create arguments, but the question is how much of that is actually, you know, media, how much truth to that is there? It's, it's a very hard situation, a very hard time to navigate from all fronts, from a business owner, from a sales agent, from a brother. Yeah, it's a bit of a minefield at the moment, mate. Tell you what, I mean, you're sort of biting off quite a bit too because you've only recently, as I understand it, started your own uh, real estate company there on the Gold Coast. Yeah, mate, um, I'm only six weeks into my new office. Um, I actually have 15 staff with me as well. So a little bit of uncharted waters ahead of us, but we try and skill ourselves to navigate through any market. How long have you been in the, the real estate game? I've been in real estate seven years this September. All right. So, I mean, that's uh, that's not bad. That's very gutsy of you to, to go in by yourself, make that commitment, because it's it's not an easy one, is it, particularly in these uncharted times that we live? No, that's correct, mate. But, you know, when you have a burning desire and a passion, I've always, uh, I've always as soon as I entered the industry, I've always wanted to open up my own office. It was an end goal of mine. And I just figured there's never the right time. And if we're skilled at our job, then we can, yeah, navigate through a good market, a challenging market. We've just got to be very innovative and two steps ahead of what's happening. So data and research is very, very important to us. That's the one, two steps ahead and rely on that data. Well, Matt, all the best going forward. It sounds like your plate is very full and all the best with TMG there in Emerald Lakes. I wish you well and no doubt we might talk again at another time. And thanks for coming on to the Real Estate Breakfast this morning. Appreciate you having me. Don't navigate the real estate market alone. Let us help guide you in the world of real estate every day. Make better informed decisions with the latest news and insights. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast. 